Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time I've got a fantastic viewer donation to the channel from my friend Chris and his daughter Juliet over in America. Um, they've uh, sent over a huge old box of uh, some Star Trek books that I was after. So we're going to be unboxing that. I've also had some more pre-war paperbacks and a few a few after the war but mostly pre-war uh, vintage paperbacks from uh, that couple i've been buying some books off um, who are heading into retirement i've got uh, my little blip game from extra west point to look at as well um, and a few other bits and pieces so uh oh and some some picador white spine books as well so quite a selection of books to look at today they all going to need cleaning and uh, sorting out so i'm really really looking forward to it so sit back relax and let's get to it Okay then, so we'll unpack this box from my patron, Chris, over in America. Now, Chris has been helping me out with my uh, Star Trek collection. He's been filling in some of the gaps for me. So, as you know, I'm doing a series looking at all the Star Trek books, pretty much in published chronological order. And um, Chris has got a fantastic... A collection of Star Trek books and uh, he has um, amassed quite a few doubles so it's been very handy for me in being able to um, to get a few spares off him. Um, he's also got a very keen uh, daughter who also uh, follows the channel and likes my book cleaning videos and looks like she may have sent me something there so I'm just going to put that to one side. Um, I've, thankfully uh, Chris has also been able to send over a couple more bits and pieces that I've ordered myself off uh, places like eBay and then had shipped to his American address. And we've kept them back until uh, such time as today to uh, to get the uh, everything sent over in one hit. So as you can see, there's a load of um, Star Trek books in here for us to take a look at, which is fantastic. I doubt they're going to need much cleaning because Chris is uh, uh, quite on the ball with his collection. He cleans them uh, just the same as I do. just dig these all out now and obviously we'll take a close look at these in a little while okay then so chris has uh, included a little letter as well hi jules hope is well uh, enclosed is your door catalog and the klingon dictionary those are a couple of bits that i bought off ebay and uh, was able to get shipped to uh, chris's address in america um, he says he's pulled the uh, Star Trek Next Generation books. These are his doubles from his uh, collection. Uh, condition varies, absolutely, but it'll still be over, um, absolutely fine to give these a read and a review when I get round to them. Um, he says uh, Julia included a little picture, a little package rather, for you as well, which is here. Um, and he says Julia picked out a special edition to the package. Excellent. Uh, we know War of the Worlds is one of your favourites, and I had an extra copy of one. It's not a first by any means, but it's a cool cover. Excellent. Hopefully you don't have it, and you can add it to your collection. Keep those Star Trek vids coming. I certainly intend to. Love your channel, and, and what an awesome studio now. Well, um, thank you very, very much, Chris and Juliet. I'm filming this in the new studio, so hopefully the sound is nice and clear. I'm certainly uh, still working on it but I think the sound is getting better and better. Um, and uh, here is the little little package from Julia, uh, Chris's daughter. And uh, I have uh, something rather special to send out to them as well. Uh, what are these? Some Hot Wheels. Oh, look at this, Hot Wheels candy. Yes, yes, I know your love of chocolate, Juliet. So uh, <laughs> have no fear. Oh, and uh, a Woody there, uh, brilliant. Excellent, thank you very much. And what's this in here? From Juliet. Oh, thank you, Juliet. Brilliant. And thank you, Chris, of course. So your reciprocal parcel is on its way to you as, we, as I film this now. Um, let's have a look through uh, the goodies that Chris has sent over. And so these are all Star Trek books that I had and sold when I was a retailer. But although I've concentrated mainly on getting Star Trek, the original series books, I had lots and lots of gaping holes in my next generation collection so uh, thankfully Chris has been able to go through his doubles which are extensive and he's pulled out all of these ones for me so this is going to mean that I'll be able to uh, I think I've pretty much got most of them up to the first 50 or so I've got some after that I haven't got any in hardback mine are all in paperback now this one I was particularly pleased to find I've been after it for a long time 
and this is the first printing of the Klingon Dictionary. So it, very soon after this, it got reprinted in a different sort of uh, a jacket. And this is one of the ones that I've managed to source in America and get sent to, uh, to Chris's address. Some of these, of course, they actually did the episode adaptions, didn't they, for the two-parters, like the special ones. And uh, here's that edition of War of the Worlds. Um, you're right, Chris, it's not one I've got. I do absolutely love uh, War of the Worlds, uh, particularly the Jeff Wayne musical adaption. I got to meet Jeff, um, God, it must have been about 15 or so years ago now. If I can find um, a couple of pictures of him signing my bits and pieces, I'll, I'll pop that into the video now. But um, that's one I definitely haven't got. Um, being a, an American tour, it wasn't likely to have got distributed over here. So thank you very much for that. That was a, an unexpected gem. Um, Vendetta, yeah, that was the, the guy one, wasn't it? All Good Things, yeah, the amazing. I absolutely loved All Good Things when it went out. The, the two-part next-gen finale. Still love it to this day, although I haven't watched it for a while. Very, very good. Contamination. And Devil's Heart. So I don't think I'm going to really need to give these a clean because they've already been through the process. Uh, Chris and Julia clean all their books. so uh, And these are very nicely bagged as well. So I'll keep them in these uh, for the time being. Oh, yeah, that was the Q continuum. I think that was like a three-parter. Well, yeah, book three of three. They sort of... I, I'm i sort of a fan more of either the giant novels or the individual ones. I, I'm not too keen on these massive multi-book series because uh, I just lo seem to lose interest halfway through, you know. Ah, now this is unusual. I don't remember seeing this before. Starfleet Academy. It looks fairly early as well, sort of in the period that I'm looking at. What, 1997? Well, Chris, I wasn't expecting that one, but that's fantastic as well. I don't remember ever seeing that one before. Yeah, I think that's I think that's quite unusual. Intellivore. Yeah, that's cool. A Fury Scorned. Nice jacket, isn't it? I'm looking forward to doing some next gen. Uh, I've done so many classic Trek Trek ones, uh, reunion. So the next Star Trek video I'm gonna be filming this week now that I've got all of these in. Ah uh, yes, and um, Zadi. Um is uh, well, it's it's the the Star Trek books from 1987, so it's it's classic Star Trek, um, and it's the very first next gen one encounter at Farpoint. So now that I've got them, I can release the videos in chronological order. Now there was one other thing that um, I had sent to Chris's address, and he's been sat on this for months, and it's a uh, it's a catalog, so he hasn't even actually opened it. So let's slip it out of its bag now. So as you know. About a year or so ago, I bought a massive, massive collection of door books, and I'm a big fan of them. And uh, this is, come on, if I <laughs> pull the uh, the camera out a little bit, this is a door books 1981 catalog, and this is they've been going just under 10 years at that point. They started 72 door books. Um, I'm going to be doing a very comprehensive door retrospective uh, where I go through my collection in numerical order right from when they started. I certainly haven't got them all, but I've, I do have a good old run of the first five to six hundred. And I think this would be really nice. I've already got one door catalogue, one or two, but I definitely didn't have this one. It's really, really nice. So once again, thank you, Chris and Juliet. Expect your goodies pretty soon. OK, so the books that I've got, the sort of older paperbacks I've got today, are in a bit of a mishmash of orders. So we're just going to tackle them as they come, I think, is probably the best way. Um, so this is a nice old pan. I bought a little batch of pans this month. Um, and when I say small, I mean it was like five or six books. Um, and of the pans, I think I probably had them all anyway. But there was a really nice old Fontana that I didn't have. And like this one, this is a first edition. So I will compare this with the one that's already in my collection and uh, see which one's the best one. And um, I can always uh, pop this in with my box of spare spare pan books as and when. Um, so not too fussed about that, but that's nice to see. Um, that doesn't need actually anything uh, doing to it at all. Uh, another one here, another You Can't Hit a Woman. This is an early pan that seems to crop up. I've had a few copies of this one through my hands. Um, got a slight spine roll. Uh, that's actually the reprint, 1954. Yeah, there's no writing inside, but it's got never, ever such a slight spine roll. Um, it'll probably correct itself when it's sort of on the shelf, as it were. Uh, another same one, St. Errant. 
Charteris 522. Yeah, that's just a straightforward reprint. I'm pretty sure it's the same cover of one that I've already got, but that's okay. I don't mind that. Now, what's this one? This is one from that uh, couple who've been sending me the really ancient books of St. Martin's Library. I hardly have any of these, and they're fairly literary titles. Um, I might have an odd one or two, but I think there's a few of these in here. Um, they're going to need a good brushing off at the end, these. And like a lot of their books, uh, this one's 1957 in this library. It's a little bit later than these. This one hasn't got any writing at all. So really, that one's fine. It's just going to need the top edges like most of these. Uh, well, in fact, all of them are going to have their top edges uh, sort of cleaned. Here's another one in that series. In fact, the same author. These are not the sort of books I would ordinarily pick up, but because I'm pretty much buying their entire library, um, I've picked up a few books which perhaps I'm not going to be keeping. Um, and this is probably these St. Martin's Press ones, aren't, or St. Martin's Library, aren't ones I'm probably going to keep. This one's got a little 40 pence inside. I need to be quite delicate on this one by the look of it. Now, I have already done some cleaning videos in the studio and if you remember if you've been following the sort of the progress of the studio i bought an ikea table to do my work on unfortunately that was woefully too thin so i've had to um swap this one for the one in the office and my wife is using the ikea one that i bought now so um what happened was i was sort of rubbing like this and the table was was it just wasn't sturdy enough and uh, consequently the, the video was going <laughs> It was going in and out. It was a nightmare. Um, so I've corrected it now. I've got a much sturdier table to do my work on. And I think that's going to be uh, fine going forward. Um, this is nice. This is the one that actually attracted me to that little lot of pan books. Um, Lady Behave. <laughs> Peter Cheney. Nice early Fontana. I don't believe it's a first, but it's like an early-ish edition. And it's definitely one I haven't got because um, I would remember the title. Yeah, this one actually dates from 1960-61. So... Uh, yeah, very, very nice. I'm pleased to have that one. <laughs> Lady behave. Right. Uh, this is a few John Goldsworthy titles. These were published. Um, you might recognize the design. It's um, Collins, so Collins White Circle. Um, well, this one needs, in fact, like a lot of these Collins books, they do end up. The glue on them was absolutely appalling. And I mean, they are 80 years old now, but infamous the collins ones they are absolutely infamous for not surviving very well so i'll um i'm going to clean these and repair them as i go with the hope that i haven't got loads and loads to clean um because i don't want these videos the the last one of these i think i put out was just under two hours it was just ridiculous uh, but that's just how how long these things take um i pulled my entire Hutchinson Library um, of pre-war paperbacks, and I've and because I had a load from this collection, uh, from this couple, and I um I cleaned the entire lot in a series of two videos, and that was the first proper video cleaning video that I've done in the studio here, and that was when I noticed that the desk wasn't sturdy enough. So that video is up on my other channel. So if you've not subscribed to that channel, I please please do because. As I speak today, it's on 550 subscribers, and I'd very much like to get it to a thousand. That particular video that I spoke about has had a mini, it's gone mini viral. So I put it up on uh, Saturday, and I filmed this on Wednesday, and it's already had 7,000 views. Um, and it's YouTube have sort of promoted it in search. So it, I think it's a great video that the actual books are fantastic. I mean, I think anyone who enjoys seeing me like um, save these books it would enjoy the content that's on there. Um, so do go and check that out. And, and importantly, if you wouldn't mind subscribing, just so that I can get to a thousand subscribers on that particular channel, that would be fantastic. Now, there's another one in the same series, the uh, White Circle ones here. Another John Goldsworthy. And... He, John Goldsworthy is one of those authors who um, it's difficult to comprehend how popular he was back in the day. And he really, really was um, author of the uh, Forsyth saga. That's his famous, famous series. 
and I believe these were adapted. I'm not sure, is this what, correct me if I'm wrong viewers, but isn't this what the series Upstairs Downstairs was based on? I honestly, I think it's something like that. And it's also something akin to, uh, I believe, something like Downton Abbey. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong on that. I might be getting my wires crossed somewhere. But that's how I've always sort of seen this. And um, these books did eventually get published by Penguin years later. And they published the whole lot in the 1960s. I think to tie in to the TV show, I believe. But that didn't take too much work, did it, to get get that one looking okay. Now it has got a dust wrapper as well. Well, the remnants of a dust wrapper. So even though it's fallen to bits, I like to keep these together. And these Goldsworthy ones, these are the first ones I've ever come across in my Collins collection. Um, so I will keep these intact as it were, even though they are pretty, pretty rotten. Um, I might also, I might even end up putting the bits of the dust wrappers in. I've got a, a box of dust wrappers, really old, tatty dust wrappers. So that, that book won't get any, the wrapper won't get any more damage and it will look much better on the, uh, on the shelf. Here's one more from that particular series. And as I said, all of these are going to need a good brush down. one where the spine has completely come away but apart from that it's absolutely fine so about two years ago i had a run of collins white circle crime books and the books themselves in a lot of cases were lovely but they'd all suffered from the glue just drying up and it must be some sort of chemical process that causes the glue to age like this i mean these are um 82 83 years old these books that we're looking at now so i suppose in a way it's almost to be expected but some books like the penguins from this period on the whole have survived much much better than these and i suppose it'll be very interesting to see how more modern books survive you know as the decades roll on but book production really ramped up in the 1950s the quality and the I guess the process has improved dramatically. So books from that period are around in nice condition. Books from this period are around in nice condition. It's just they're few and far between because they've uh, had uh, a lot to go through. Here's another one in that St. Martin's Library. Don't know much about these, but um, they are certainly unusual. Um, as I said, I don't think I'm going to, um, nothing wrong with that at all, uh, end up keeping these, but um, I'm going to put them through the process just so that they're ready to uh, to move on. But it's not a series I'm going to collect. But on the whole, they're very, very nice. The ones that I've had have turned up in really nice condition here. And um, here's another pan. As I said, they are a bit of a mixture. Another Peter Cheney. This one's going to benefit from a bit of a polish in actual fact. So some of these I am actually going to put a bit of polish over. So and that's a first as well. And obviously I have definitely got this one. Uh, I've got it's a numbered one, which um, I've got all the numbered ones. So if I just pull the ones that I'm able to give a polish to, to one side, so that I can sort of do work these out in order. So these are going to be polishable. And those are other older ones over there. I'm just going to, I can't polish because they're, it would, it would uh, damage the books, you know. Savoy Operas, what's this? This has got an insert, an insertion as they say. I don't think it's anything to do with the, uh, no, it's nothing to do with these, uh, these books at all. So I'll put that to one side. So I'm hoping that um, the sound quality that you're hearing now is much better than some of the more recent videos that I've been putting out. Now, the reason for this is, of course, as I said, I'm now in the studio, which has got lots of soundproofing. Although when I film these, I can still hear like a particularly loud car go by or if someone's working in their garden, that sort of thing. Although, you know, I'm filming this in February and the weather's 
and actually the start of March and the weather's particularly rubbish at the moment so there's not a lot of people working in their gardens and it's midweek um, but even so I would hope that you can hear it in the in the actual recordings of the video that the uh, the sound has hopefully improved on your ear um, I do know some people like to sometimes they just listen to these podcast uh, listen to these like a podcast um, which is absolutely fine hopefully I've got enough interest in stuff to rabbit on about <laughs> yeah another one of these goals where are these that needs re-gluing apart from that they've been in nice condition um they probably an original owner uh, that's actually got a tear on the back of the spine so i need to be a bit careful there certainly been getting through the old prit stick but yeah, I'm still finding my feet in the studio, but so far I think it's uh, it, it's going okay. Uh, one of the videos I shot recently in here on Sunday uh, was a look at my Futurama collection. So I went through and pulled all my Futurama bits and pieces out, with the exception of the American comics, which I have already shown on the channel, because good news, everybody, the series is coming back, which is fantastic. And I always preferred it over the simpsons um it was just something a bit different and it appealed to my you know the space side of things and there were so many great in jokes and lots of um sci-fi sort of related actors would be in it lots of star trek uh, cast for example would appear in the show as guest stars which was fantastic just loved it and so many um science fiction in jokes which if you've been into the genre you're definitely going to get and that's why i love the show really um, and the fact that the news that it's now coming back is, I think, fantastic. Um, it's just the chap who plays the voice of Bender. I think he's called John DiMaggio. He hasn't, as far as I know, he's still not been signed on, but all the rest of the original cast are back to do their original voices, which is fantastic. So I just hope that they can get Bender because he was arguably the star of the show. Now look at that one that's just come off there so that's absolutely fine so yeah but it's come off in quite a nice piece so it should be fairly easy to uh to glue this back on and i think it's just a trait of the books these collins books because as i said all the ones that i've had including all the crime ones and things like that um that i've got in my collection they've all suffered the same fate where the spines have needed re-gluing but as you can see, it's hardly a task because it's just popping a bit of print stick on. Marrying the covers up just to keep them in one piece. Yes, as I said on the other channel, that latest video I put up, it was my entire Hutchinson library, has gone really great guns. Um, and, and YouTube decided to promote it, which is great for me. And it's given the channel another boost because it was just sort of plodding along. Um, and it just needs to get to that sort of level where it's at a thousand subscribers and then it has a little bit of legitimacy and uh i think it'll attract a bit more of a wider audience then so if you haven't already if you wouldn't mind heading over there that would be cool and as i said i've got so much i've had to clean recently that if you enjoy these sorts of videos i'm having to put brand new cleaning videos over there now because my other channel this one here where I put three videos a week up is just a bit too full for anything any additional stuff so from that point of view you're gonna to have to do it now this one once again it's got the remnants of a dust wrapper so I'll take that for now and I think we pretty much must have had I don't know if they're first printing this in paperback but we must have had virtually the full set that's six john goals worthies there can't be that many more in the series um albatross another series that i really like i'm um, not sure if i've got this one or not but I'll take it out of its slightly grubby wrapper with bits falling off it as well underneath it's not too bad it's one of the later ones the post-war ones and they didn't survive very long post-war i'm pretty sure i haven't got this one 20 pence inside there or 20 something and as you know these were sold on the uh, continent they weren't designed to be sold originally in the UK
Now you may remember last week, last month rather, I uh, told you about the book White Spines by Nicholas Royal. Well, since then um, I have been out and I managed to pick up a little batch of uh, uh, original Picador White Spine books. I'm really pleased with that. And we've got those to have a look at today. Um, some of them are really nice and they were dirt cheap. A couple of the very earliest ones, that, in fact, they're from the very first year that Picador started, are not in the greatest of condition, but I'm still quite pleased to have them all the same, you know? There we are. So not the greatest of dust wrappers on this one, but it'll do. It'll do. Now, this one was quite nice. This is probably the rarest book we'll see today, although on first glance, you might not think that. Um, and it is this Edgar Wallace. Now, this is a Collins White Circle. It says White Circle. But it was one that was produced for the Canadian market. So if you have a look in the bottom, the clue was in that the color, they had colored edges. And I got this from a bookshop uh, in, in Plymouth on the Barbican. There we are, look, Collins. And it's got the Toronto address which is the giveaway so this is a collins canada i've only got two there we are printed in canada i've only got about three of these and the earlier ones had um these like well, like a penguin cover almost they didn't have a picture on whereas the later ones do have um, a picture jacket um very very unusual to find them in the uk as i said i've only got about three of them and over here they all go for very very good money uh, my friend gary lavisi in america has a really tasty run of about a hundred of them and uh, they're all really lovely condition as you would expect from someone like him so if you've not checked out that video do do so that's lovely once again i can't put any polish on that one because of its age but very nice all the same so i think what i'm going to do now um i'm just going to clean the ones that we've done so i'm going to give them a brush off with my um sort of a shoe brush here first of all and then these pan ones can actually have a bit of a polish on the front covers and spines and the other ones over there i'm just going to um give the brush off to and then these are pretty much done then That's made a, quite a difference on those. So we'll give them a polish in a minute. But these other ones that we've done, I'm just going to give them the uh, the brush. And I tend to do them at like, if they're this size, about four at a time. Now these are much, much older. And I would expect quite a bit of dust and dirt to come off the top edges. But it will vary. <laughs> being quite gentle with these as well. Yeah, that's made those a little bit cleaner. It's amazing how much dust and debris comes off these after I've had a cleaning session. Boy, oh boy, do you know about it? I have to get the, uh, the hoover in here. <laughs> now these I think would be easier just to do the four goals were these and I've got five of those other ones yeah so although he was mega mega popular in his day I've never read John Goldsworthy I'd love to know if any of my viewers have actually read him as well but you can see these are from the same collection because they've got little like blotches of something where something splashed against the top so these are these are an original owner collection and they've gone through the same sort of aging process there's still lots of uh let's sort those out a little bit now, can i do these in one hit just about these aren't too bad these these are much more modern they're mid 50s so they're nowhere near as dirty or even dusty they've obviously been looked after to be honest they don't really even appear red quite literary not my sort of thing at all and I, as i said i'm not going to keep those in my collection but they're interesting to see um, now i need to um get the old polish out so i use for anyone who doesn't know i use mr sheen it's just an all-round um 
furniture polish. I'm trying to remember what the um, what the American equivalent of it is. Someone did tell me. Um, I can't remember now. But what I tend to do is just put a big blob in the corner here of this really, really soft and used duster. The more it's used and washed, the better it is. Like so. And all I'm going to do now that that's damp is just run it over the cover like this. And um, these sorts of covers, they hold a lot of like invisible sort of fingerprints and dirt. And it can make a massive difference on these. Um, and as I said, although I think I've got them all, um, I do want to compare them with the ones already in my collection so that I've got the best condition one. And then I'll... Um, then I'll move the uh, the spare ones into my box of spare pants which um, if you are looking for any do please drop me a line and I can uh, I sent about a hundred to a chap in uh, France recently uh, but I've still got about 500 spare pan doubles most of them first editions predominantly numbered only and early great pans and pan giants but if there are particular ones you're after I've usually got a few. I will get around to eBay and them all eventually, but um, it's just a time thing. With some of these other earlier paperbacks, I just put them up in job lots on eBay just to clear them out. And uh, I know some of my viewers jump on there and grab those when they turn up. Yeah, this is worth it just for the title alone. Showed it to the wife the other day. In a joking manner, I'm saying, just saying. Now, I know some people like these videos because they enjoy the cleaning process. They find it relaxing. And I gotta admit, I, I love doing them myself because it's satisfying to see the books come up clean. Like this one has actually come up absolutely superb. Really taken the, that brought the white out on the back cover there. Um, but also, you know, they just find it relaxing just to listen to. Now, as a result of the uh, the video on the other channel doing very well, it's got a lot of new people looking at it and listening to it. And uh, three people have commented on this latest video I put up over there saying, are you Dr. Gill? You sound just like Dr. Gill. I thought, you on earth is Dr. Gill? Yes. So I looked it up, and by all means, you can do this yourselves. And Dr. Gill is indeed a doctor, and um, he puts shortish videos up on YouTube, which are looking at tiny, you know, a particular medical thing, like um, this person's got a bad back, or uh, this is how I would examine somebody's ear, or something like this, you know. And I listened to one, I couldn't believe it, the guy sounds exactly like me. And I've, well, I was shocked, let's put it that way, I was shocked. So if you want a bit of a laugh, um, I mean, his channel is enormous. It's very, very specialist, of course, and it isn't like unintentional ASMR or anything like that. It is, um, it is a proper, you know, he is a proper doctor, shall we say. Um, but boy, oh boy, I was really, really taken aback by that. So anyway, if you want a bit of a laugh and find my, um, my voice double, that's where he is. Dr. Gill. Anyway. Unicorn books. Now, this is another series that I didn't really know a lot about. I don't think there's very many of them, but I have got a few here. Um, they were a shilling a pop, which was expensive back then. I don't think... Were they dated? Is that 1939? Hmm. I don't know. Um, G.K. Cheston, you know, author of the Father Brown stories. Uh, quite famous in his own right. These are quite old and a bit worn these ones so once again not sure if i'm going to end up keeping them in the collection because there's not a lot here to interest me i'm not a massive fan of gk chesterton um i know my dad used to like him for the father brown books but not really my cup of tea But unicorn books, yeah, they're not something I've seen. So we've got a few, just a handful of these. As I said, I don't think there's very many. There may only be the 12, I don't know. I've never really researched them. These are in a, a variety of conditions. Um, that one was, I would say, fairly worn in the wrapper. This one's much, much better. So I've never looked them up or anything. So if anyone can shed any light 
on uh, Unicorn Books, let me know because they're very uh, quite unusual. I don't think I've ever ever come across them before. Um, a lot of the subjects are sort of religious in nature, like this one. And once again, these aren't too bad condition. They're just, um, you know, not highly desirable in my eyes. There's no sort of genre fiction here at all, which is, you know, which what attracts me. And the cover, let's be honest, hardly sets the uh, the world on fire. But Hilaire Belloc, that's another sort of known author, isn't it? So maybe these are uh, potentially of a, you know would appeal to a literary audience maybe you know there's a few more guild books today um i have cleaned a lot of guild books lately um so whether these are going to prove to be doubles i don't know um, but I've got my guild, thankfully I've got my guild books collection all catalogued now, um, but they're not on the shelf. So what I've done, because I've had so many books come my way recently, I've had to, in my sort of collection room, I've emptied the bookcase which had my original Xbox collection in, because that is uh, on the 14th of March. The Xbox is 20 years since it was released in the UK. So I thought, what better? And I've collect, it's the only sort of retro console I collect these days. And I thought, what better time to do like a, a new retrospective series and try and fill in a few gaps in my original Xbox collection um, at the same time. So what I've done, I pulled my original Xbox collection, the bookcase that they were on, down. And I'm going to be storing them in my boy's room because he's got his Xbox and. The original Xbox games, a lot of them are backward compatible on the most recent Xbox, which is really, really cool. So it gives these old 20 year games just stick in the CD and they work, which is absolutely fantastic. So um, I've, I've picked up a bookcase in Ikea and I've built it and popped it into uh, my son's room. And I shall be doing sort of an overview of my collection. Um, on or around the week of the Xbox's 20th anniversary from when it was released in the UK, which is uh, the 14th of March. Um, so look out for that one. Certainly I do enjoy the Xbox to this day. Um, the other great thing that's happened is the... Uh, Steam Deck has uh, been released in the States. Now, I definitely intend, I've got my pre-order in, so I should be on the first sort of, I should be hearing that I can go ahead and place my order for it, um, for my Steam Deck. As I said, I've got my reservation confirmed within the next one to two months. Um, so once I've, uh, that comes through, I've got the money aside to, uh, to order my Steam Deck. And then there's a whole, I'm gonna be doing a whole raft of videos on uh, emulating modern systems on the Steam Deck, and it will emulate every system, um, including the Switch, the PlayStation 3 backwards, the Xbox original, it will emulate, because it's basically a Windows PC running Linux in a handheld. So uh, when that comes about, look out for a whole series of videos on that. I'm looking forward to getting my, whenever it should arrive. These are quite good. These are Jackdaw books, which, uh, once again, I'm going to need to check to see if this is one that I need. But it's, it's like a little spin-off from Hutchinson, and they did a few of these. So, I said, they're all in a bit of a mixture. Um, this is an Albatross. No wrapper on this one. Albatross 219. What's this inside? Oh, look at this. So, Exponate. This one is a little insert. Explanation of the colour scheme in different languages. Red, stories of adventure and crime. Blue, love stories. Green, travel and foreign peoples. Purple, biographies. Yellow, psychological novels. Orange volumes, tales and short stories. Humorous and satirical works. And grey, plays, poetry 
and collected music. And there we are. Lovely. I do uh, love the do love the Albatross Library. They're very very nice. Certainly a series I I enjoy collecting. I've just realised I uh, didn't fix the spine on this jackdaw. So let me just whip that one out of the wrapper again and just glue the spine in a bit. Being a bit blasé there. And like a lot of the Hutchinson books, this is that bit there, just how they're made. That's just how these books go. When they've been read a few times, that's just how they get damaged. It's really weird, but it's it's, it's the particular trait of these particular books. Very unusual. So we're going to slide a bit more underneath there. Like so. There we are. And then we'll do the same in the top bit here. Just to keep that spine you know, from getting any worse, really. Very, very easy to get these things. They can get damaged if you're not careful with them. I said it may be one I've already got, in which case, once again, it will go in my uh, swaps pile and then I'll wait till I've got a few of them and then I, I generally stick them up in little lots for not too much money. Here's another albatross, uh, another slightly later one. It's in a wrapper. Oh, it's got some stamps in. Where are these from? Portugal. Madeira. There we are. Anyone collect stamps? <laughs> not me. Just nuts, isn't it? What you find in in old books. This one's pretty nice condition. Just the, a little bit of aging, as you would expect from a book of this age, and, and a bit dusty, but not a great deal we can do about the toning. That's just aging, and it's probably been stored in quite a warm environment, and that generally causes the yellowing of the of the books the pages they sort of age over time that's why you know people like chris there who uh with his star trek books he keeps those all bagged and it does protect them from the elements this is a nice one i've i have definitely got this one it's uh churchill blenheim quite a thin little volume this Nice in its wrapper though. Oh, just wrapper flaps. So it's probably a reprint this one in actual fact, which I may end up keeping because even wartime reprints of some of Churchill's books are worth having. And I collect Churchill sort of as a separate entity. So um, I think I might keep that one. Um, this one's okay. It's got a bit of um, sellotape on the spine. I'm not sure if this name on the front is going to come off. Yeah, it's coming off. You have to be careful with these sometimes. You don't want to cause the cover to get, you know, rubbed worse than it already is. But this is a pretty, a pretty beaten up old copy, isn't it? So it would be, take a hard job to actually make this even worse condition. Yeah, village labour. Hmm. Another guild one. Well, we're certainly well over halfway on the books now. This is um, one of their non fiction titles for Guild again. And Guild were one of those publishers that were lots of other publishers all sort of bandied together. Um, they were a bit envious of Penguin having the lion's share of the paperback market. So they, uh, they bandied together some of the other publishers and uh, formed their Publishers Guild, and that's what this is. Always difficult when the price is on the inside front cover. Got 
that's come off okay. And one of the little tricks that I do is I just use a similar sized book to rest it so that I'm not leaning the cover all the way back like that and then trying to do it much, much different, much harder to do. So uh, it's far, far easier to do it that way. There we are. So that's that one done. Another one of these St. Martins. Well, just a handful more of these by the look of it. There we are, flying through these now. Looking forward to having a look at the uh, the picadors I've picked up. I haven't got anything like the space to collect them properly. But if they're going to come my way cheap, I'm not going to say no. And that is fatal. <laughs> now this is a bit more uh, beaten up. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to take this pencil off the front yeah it seems to be coming off very very grubby indeed who would ever write on a book's front jacket like this i mean i certainly wouldn't but i suppose in second hand times <laughs> still left a little 15p there on the front so yeah a bit more of a grubby one this but hey ho Another odd guild one here. And thank goodness I've got these uh, all catalogued now, the ones I've got in my collection, because I'd have no idea off the top of my head which ones I've got and which ones I haven't. Anyway, such is the way. So I started filming this one in the morning and um, Rolo, because it doesn't sound like it's raining, Rolo needs his walk. So I'm gonna need to quickly give these a quick brush and we're well over halfway now um, but we have got some quite interesting other bits and pieces to still to have a look at so i'm gonna just give these a brush and then we'll take a quick pause while i go in there i'm gonna go and walk the dog so let's uh quickly give these the brush But yeah, February was a short month, but it was a good month for pickup, so I can't complain. And um, I really felt like the uh, the studio came together in February, and uh, I started getting a bit more savvy with the uh, the sound, for example. Um, it's still, uh, it, in a way, I wish it was slightly bigger, the studio, slightly wider and a little bit longer, um, just because the lighting is quite big the lighting that i've got um but i could always get overhead lighting and that's not something that i've ruled out yet but i think i think what you're seeing is absolutely fine lighting wise the main my main concern was the audio which was literally doing my head in as they say because it was so so echoey filming it in the kitchen but it was the only place where i could do it and now with all the soundproofing that you've seen i've put in hopefully this is sounding much much richer and clearer brilliant so i think that's a good spot to say it's half time i'm going to go and walk rollo and an excellent opportunity to thank my very loyal and lovely patron and channel member subscribers, not least of which Chris and Julia Edwards with their fantastic contribution in February. Okay. Having a nice walk, Rollo. Really? Good boy. Muddy today.
Okay, so before we clean any more books, I did want to just show you this one. It's Steve Holland, The World's Greatest Illustration Art Model by Michael Stradford. So uh, this one's just arrived uh, through my door this week and it's absolutely fantastic. I will be doing a full walkthrough and uh, review of this one, but basically it's about Steve Holland and he was a male model who artists would photograph and then they would use the photographs in uh, book jackets. They would then paint the, f the covers up. So uh, absolutely fantastic. And it's got lots and lots of, there he is, just a, a couple of uh, Louis Lemours there. So there he is like holding the gun and then there's the eventual um, book cover where that bit of the uh, photograph was taken. So fantastic stuff. And this book looks at uh, Steve's uh, entire career. It does look fantastic. So I'm going to have a really uh, great read of this one this week and um, I'll film a little review a bit later on. But just wanted to put that one on your radar because it's just been published. And if you're into uh, the sort of history of vintage paperback books, then that's definitely one that you're going to want to put on your wants list. We've just got about a dozen or so slightly older titles and then we're into some more picadors. I've got a couple of hardbacks and I've got one of my pickups from the West Point Toy Fair. So um, cool stuff, cool stuff. Um, so what's this one? This is a Phoenix book. And once again, this is one of those ones that I don't have many of. It says not to be introduced into the British Empire or the USA. And uh, I don't know if I've got any Phoenix books. This one says... Volume 11, published in Paris. No actual date on that one at all. What's this on the inside back cover? No, it doesn't give me any clues on that. So I don't think I know a lot about that particular publisher. So if, it, if anyone does who's watching this, do let me know. Um, well, we've seen a few of these, haven't we? Zephyr, Zephyr Books. This is an, an, a good author, William Faulkner. And it's his, in fact, it's his most classic book, in my opinion, The Wild Palms. Oh, what's this? Wow, what a lovely little bookmark that is. It's a French one because these were sold on the continent, predominantly in Paris. Yeah, number 16 Avenue de Gaulle. Lovely, absolutely love it. How gorgeous is that? And that will be staying right there with it. Um, very, very nice indeed. Um, really nice condition. So it's a dust wrapper. It's just got a little one pound inside so whoever bought this for a pound did very well didn't they particularly with that gorgeous uh, bookmark that's very very nice i do love uh finding interest in bits inside books as uh nicholas royal calls them insertions <laughs> that's a great way of describing them that's lovely that one another guild on here the romance of words Must have an incredible guild collection nowadays. Um, I don't think they went that long, just a few years really. Um, but I do have quite a, quite a run of them now. I'm pretty sure I've got this one though, Scott of the Antarctic, already in my collection, so I might have a few odd doubles. Little gentle 30p to rub out. a few of these very thin guild ones no truce with time a bit of missing the bottom of the spine there so it could be slightly better condition that one but if it's one i haven't got i'm definitely going to still keep it just as a filler but he's uh he's a bit worse for wear Yeah, I might just pop a little bit of glue in the top there. I don't think it's going to make a massive difference. But just to perhaps stop it getting any worse, just slide a bit in the top there. It doesn't even want to go in very well. It's a really awkward spot, to be honest. And that is a 
perfect example of a very, very fragile wartime one, but that's okay. That'll, that'll do for now. I've, fingers crossed I've already got him in my collection anyway. I don't actively collect the guild books, but I've just had a load come my way and I've pulled together what I had already and um, they've suddenly formed into a bit of a collection. How did that happen, I wonder? And I've got this one already. Yes, so I'm very, very close to. to finally biting the bullet and doing a, a live stream so i don't think when i when i do eventually get around to doing it, i don't think there's going to be a lot of notice um but i shall just hit the button and um we'll just see how it goes i think so look out for that but i will try and theme it so if i, I try and do maybe a star wars one and then maybe a, a general books related one uh, for that sort of audience and we'll see how we go I have a feeling it might be a bit easier if I've got someone with me who can keep an eye on the chat and highlight any interesting questions and stuff like that that comes through. It might be quite handy. So we'll have a little think about that. So these were all pretty nice condition and they all had like little 25Ps, which isn't bad. Looks like most of them have at some point been through the second hand sort of system. That one's got a little bit of spine damage at the bottom, which. Well, not spine damage, it's just a little bit of the spine coming away. So I'll put a little slither of glue in that bit. Which should be enough, really, just to keep that from getting any worse. That's a lot. Yeah, there we are. So it doesn't take a lot. Oh, another pan. It's a great one, that isn't it? The saint steps in. A Rex cover, that one. fourth printing from 1959 i believe it's the first edition cover it's the same jacket so for that reason i probably won't keep that one because um, i'm only really interested in keeping the different um sort uh different jackets if it's the same jacket but just a separate printing then i won't bother with that um you definitely can't keep everything but it's absolutely fine as a reading copy of course So just a handful of these really old, really vintage paper packs to go now. This is a very thin little guild book. The Greatest People in the World, another story, Flying Officer X. Pretty sure I've got this one. Now this is one of their non-fiction ones, so it's got a different sort of colour cover. But all the corners here, are, not all of them, but a lot of the corners are folded in. Which is a bit annoying, isn't it? How dare they? So I'm not sure if you caught my latest viewers book collection video. So I've got three lovely collections in there. One of them is from Nicholas Royal and it's his collection predominantly of Picadors, but he does collect a few other things as well. Then there was a great collection of um, fantastic American sort of pulpy titles really really great classic stuff and then um a local friend of mine called dave stevens he shared his james bond collection in his fleming books and uh, his james bond non-fiction fantastic little run of, of books very very enjoyable it was a joy to put that video together i tell you so if you 
or on the fence a little bit about maybe sharing your collection just have a little look at that video send a load of photos in and i'll do the rest Guild 9. Don't think I've got this one. Unflinching. Another very, very thin one. So this has got a receipt from Blackwell's books in Oxford. The 21st of March, 87. <laughs> Love it. Absolutely love it. Well, Black Calls is still there, I believe, at that location. Obviously, uh, they're at the university bookstore. And I believe for a while Black Calls actually had a penguin bookshop as well, but I might be wrong. But I seem to remember they did. Village Doctor. Is that a bit of a repair there? I'm not sure if it's one I've already got. Doesn't ring a bell. Now, one thing I did want to bring up, and maybe if you're listening to this, you could weigh in in the comments. Um, is music or not music so in some of my videos i do put a little bit of background music just to sort of keep it a little bit punchy else it would be a bit dry to be honest um so i think certain videos are worth having a little bit of music in but maybe not all of them so i am hearing the comments i am trying to be a bit more selective on including music or not all right so um Bear with me on that, but if you'd like to, you know, weigh in, I suppose I could always put a uh, a poll on um, YouTube, couldn't I? Music or no, not music? <laughs> I don't know. We're almost there, actually. I've got to start on the Picadores in a sec. One of those slightly weird unicorn books. Well, this is a Hodder and Stoughton yellow jacket. And they did a lot of uh, saint books. Not sure. I've got a few of these. I've got about a dozen of these saint books in this format. In fact, once again, I actually got a little batch donated by a viewer. And really, really nice. Because um, I didn't have any. I had a load of pan ones, of course. But I didn't have any Hodder ones. And he... Uh, he sent me a lowdown, which of course I've still kept. But I don't know if this is the Saint's Getaway was one that was in that little lot, or if it's going to end up being a double. But if it is, I'm sure someone will grab it. In fact, I might even make a little Saint lot if I've got a few bits and pieces to put in. There we are. So that just needed a little bit of glue in the bottom of the spine there. But that's, that's kept that together nicely. There we are. Lovely. And then I got one, another guild one, but this is a guild services edition. So you see it says services. Um, this didn't see active service because it was sold after the war by WH Smith. It's got that sticker on there. So if you see that sticker, generally speaking, they've never actually been used as a services edition. So these are much more common than you might think. Um, even so, very, very nice to have. Um, lovely. So let me just pause there. That's all the vintage books. Then we've got a few more modern bits to look at. Now, before I do those other bits, I'm going to give these a good brush. Make sure we get all the dust off the top edges. when you do these it's amazing absolutely amazing what ends up coming off it really is quite quite a surprise 
Make quite a big difference to that little lot. Lovely. I need to pop these over here. It's always the top edges that, of course, attract the dust and dirt because they're generally stored upright. And over the years, the dust settles and the soot from the old fireplaces, which we tend to forget these days. But when you're talking books of this vintage, that was very much how they were stored. But on the whole, these weren't too bad. Lovely, right, so, the next thing we've got is a little run of Picador books. Now, I haven't actively gone out to collect these, but having read Nicholas Royal's book on collecting, his collecting the white spined Picador books, it has made me acutely aware of them. And when I've come across a few in early or first edition in Picador and they've been cheap, then I've gone for it. So I did visit a local bookshop and they had a run of Ian McEwan's who I imagine these are probably quite because he's such a great literary author these probably aren't incredibly rare or anything but um for the price that they were being sold at I didn't really want to resist so they were to about £2.50 each which I thought was very very good for the condition that they were in in fact this one here going through it that's absolutely fine all it really needs I'm going to do the top edges and I'm going to uh, give the cover a polish um they're not all like that, but that is a particularly good one. 19, uh, 1980, first published by Pan as a Picador there. So that's um, quite a nice one. There's a few Ian McEwans to get through, but they're certainly not all his. First Love, Last Rites. So when I was in the book trade, um, we were Ian McEwan was one of those authors that you really pushed because he was such a great literary author. It's from 1976, this one. 70p on the back. Yeah, lovely to have these in, in first editions. And um, when On Chisel Beach came out, um, they actually did an exclusive edition for Waterstones of that one because they were uh, so behind it. And it did very, very well, of course. 1980, 1982, this door one. So these have all been first editions first Picador editions. Now, this is a very early one. Um, is it Herman Hess? I'm not sure if this is this is from 1972 so that's one of the first eight Picadors ever released that one. Ross Howell and uh, this is not a great copy by any means you see it's really uh, tanned and a bit of polish I think is going to make a bit of a difference on that one um, 40 pence uh, cover price but not great compared to those beautiful McEwans but you know these early ones if they're cheap which that was and like this one I'm going to pick them up now and um, this is another one I think it's from the first look at that Rizzlers no thank you don't smoke me <laughs> uh, another one from the early early period it's amazing what you find in books, isn't it? This is yet yeah, 19... So those two were from the first eight Picadors ever ever published. Which is quite cool, isn't it? We've got a couple more here. Another Ian McCoo, and this one um heard is, is very, very good. The Comfort of Strangers. This is 195 on the back, so this may not be an original. This Picador, 1982. Nope, looks like it is a first still. So that's all right, isn't it? And then I've got one more Picador, big thick one, and it's Norman Mailer, who is a great, great author. Ancient Evenings, look at the size of it, massive, eh? 
Um, it's one I've never read. I like what I have read of Norman Mailer. It's been fantastic. He's a great, great author. So although it's a huge one, um, I might take it on holiday with me um, and see um, if I can get into it on a long, you know, long old trip and uh, sat by the pool maybe if I get a chance. Um, so I think we will... Uh, none of them had any writing in, so I think I'm going to give these a clean off now and also a polish. But I don't think, probably the, there's a couple of old ones, that they're, they're not too bad, are they? And the Ian McEwans are excellent. I can certainly see the attraction of them, and they're great. Generally speaking, the Picador titles are going to be from authors who you perhaps really want to read. or you, But maybe, for me, they're authors I've never really tried before in some cases, because they're quite literary. But I appreciate, more than ever, good writing. Having read so much rubbish writing. Um, I love a good story, don't get me wrong. But I also really appreciate great writing, because I know how hard it is to do myself. And for that reason, reading the odd, quite thin literary novel does not hurt. And of course, in a lot of cases, they're quite quick reads. <laughs> okay, now I am going to give these a polish as well, because they've got glossy covers. And I think with these picadors in particular, I think it's going to make a difference. So let's get a corner of the cloth again. Give it a good squirt. Now this one was one of the worst ones, wasn't it? So we'll see what happens if it does sort of liven it up a little bit, takes off some of the yellow. And it was either in the home of a smoker or it's just, you know, been stored in a very hot, maybe sunny environment, which has caused it to go this way. A little bit of the muck's coming off the spine down the bottom there. That was quite pleasing to see. So yeah, it looks like the spine's clearing up, which is good. So that's what I was hoping really, that these might might come up okay. Yeah, that's made a massive difference. Just this bit of the top here. Wow. Look at that spine now, that's come up. Amazing, isn't it? So we just need to do a bit more of that on the back, and I think, because this one is responding so well to it, I'm putting it directly on. And it really uh, works them into the back cover here. Who would have thought that it would have come up quite as nice as it has? Because he was a bit borderline. You know, there's no way I'm going to be able to get a big collection of picadors together but going forward I'm definitely going to be picking up ones which are turning up in nice condition I only picked this one up because it was part of the first eight and it would be nice to I suppose get the first eight or I think the second year they did about 10 or 12 so it'd be really nice to get those those very early ones on into the collection um, and they would be part of my sort of pan collection you know they were the next sort of step and i've got pan sci-fi from the 70s so i may well do it well i would say that that is a bit of a success story there that's come up miles better than it was I might give the front another quick buff in as well because it's not been the easiest one to clean, but it's made a massive difference. And that's because this front cover is just laminated. So all that grime of uh, the best part, well, exactly 50 years since Picador launched, has been rubbed away. Look at that, that's miles better, isn't it? Miles better. Well, I think it's miles better. Now these other Ian McEwans don't need anything like as much treatment because they're already very, very nice. The tiny little mark on the edge of the spine there, or edge of the, the cover. And even if you can't see it, there's always little bits and pieces 
that accumulate. It's like invisible dirt, I call it. And these books will look better having been through this process. But as I said, you can only do it on the recent, you know, books from the last sort of 50 years when varnish um, lamination sort of came in. You can do it on the, the pans and that, but you just need to do it delicately. These, you can put the spray straight on and it doesn't hurt them at all. So now, that one there has become an exceptional copy. And they were all first editions, weren't they, those uh, McEwans? So with this one, I don't know if you can see, but we'll do like a before and after. So around the top there, you can sort of see like, I don't know, storage or some sort of dirt or damage. The spine doesn't seem too bad. doesn't even seem too badly faded. But once again, around the edges here, in the light, you can just sort of see a layer of, of dirt. So I'm just going to pop a squirt straight on the cover. I can almost feel it under my hand, lifting that dirt at the top off. The rest of the cover wasn't too bad. Tiny little bit extra in the corner there. But look at that, look at that cover now. That dirt that was around the top has all but vanished. Now the spine wasn't too bad. It was a, a tiny bit faded, but still okay. Then the back was a similar sort of situation, really. So I'm just uh, going quite, I'm pressing quite firmly on this one. So good job I changed the table, I tell you. There we are. That's lovely. Very, very nice. Another one here, same same treatment, although this one's not so badly marked. Yeah, so Picador themselves are celebrating their 50th anniversary this year, which is fantastic for the imprint. And they've had some massive successes over the years. I suppose Last Orders was their biggest hit. That or Bridget Jones's Diary. I was really pleased to get this one. As I said, it's not one that I've read, but I do fancy it. Um, and Norman Mailer is such a great writer, isn't he? But it does seem a little bit daunting because of the size, but what the hell, eh? Looks like it's never really been read properly, or if it has, it's been read quite delicately. I don't know if this is sort of, but you can even read delicately. <laughs> Sort of think if you get really stuck into it, it's just going to get damaged, isn't it? That's okay. Lovely. A couple more of these, and I'll save the worst looking condition wise one to the end and see if we can do anything on that. be investing in a new tin of Mr Sheen I think in the States they call it pledge which is also around over here as well but I think that's that's one that you can get in America which has the same effect as this And these must have been an original, they, they all came at the same place. They must have been an original owner collection, which has been um, just sort of 
ended up in the second hand shop at some point lovely and then we got the last one of the picadors this is um i mean it's i don't know if that, we're going to be able to get much off that but it's going to be interesting trying it so i'm going to put square up right on the front first of all and this cloth is already sort of impregnated with Mr. Sheen, so it's already sort of a bit damp. Striking cover, isn't it? Okay. Now, what will happen with this spine? Is it going to lighten up or is it just too far gone? Yeah, it's actually rubbed off a bit so it really isn't going to come up that well i can see it fading a little bit but not that well and it's actually got some of the text missing so it's never going to come up perfect because it's already like a bit hammered i think the back cover will come up a bit better then so we we'll give that a try but it's just not going to look a picture on the shelf but it's not going to be the end of the world chances are now that these are on my radar i'll come across another one at some point. But even I am not a miracle worker. But the back's come up much clearer than it was. But you can see, you can sort of see the spine there. There we are. It's just the spine, it's like, um, it's like it's been on in the sun and it's bled through somehow. So it's not going to look great on the shelf, but front and back could be worse, couldn't it? But that's the Picadors. And I don't think they look too bad at all. Now, we're almost there. We've only got a couple more things to look at. So let me just reset the camera again. Okay, so I went to the West Point Toy Fair um, a couple of weeks back and I picked up this electronics game and um, Inside it's pretty much mint, but the box needs a bit of repair. So we will re-glue that one in just a sec, and I'll turn it on and see if we can get a bit of action. But I've just got two more books to do, which are in hardback. So we've got this one here. Now it's um, by an author called Elizabeth Taylor. Now it's not the actress, the screen actress. It's an author called Elizabeth Taylor. And although her writing was predominantly aimed at women, um, some of it, I, you know, I think um, is just fantastic. It's just a fantastic read. She's a great, great writer. And out of all that she did, some fantastic short stories. But this was her, of all the novels of hers that I've read, In a Summer Season is the one that I most liked. And uh, I've been after a first edition hardback of it for many years, probably about five years. I've got it in um, a paperback. And most of her output was published by Penguin in paperback and then nowadays i think it's in vintage um, but this was a lovely copy of it and uh, no wrapper of course and sadly um but you know it's, this is a hundred pound book if it was in its original wrapper now looking at it there's no marks at all it is actually just the edges um you see it's got a slight roll but that's easily sorted but uh once it's stored properly but i just wanted to give the edges a bit of a a bit of a dust off so what I think I'd do I use the toothbrush to be a bit more precise initially getting into uh, sort of that area there because I've got a couple of hardbacks today and this was one of them so this one was first published in 1961 so it's uh, 60 61 years old um, and if you want something a bit different I recommend Elizabeth Taylor and if you want to just dip your toe in the water there's a particularly good collection of short stories which um, I think you'll do very well to search out. She's a great writer. She did have a bit of a revival about 10 years ago. I'm not sure if that carried on or what. There we are. So I'm using the toothbrush to get right into the edges there and then I'll use this one to be a bit more bit more aggressive on the rest of it. Yeah, I would 
have liked to have found one in their wrapper. And sadly, the company I use in San Francisco that do reproduction wrappers, they haven't got any Elizabeth Taylor at all. So, and when these turn up in wrappers on, online, they're always a few hundred pounds. So they're a bit beyond my budget for, you know, for wanting to, to read this person, you know. Um, there we are. So that just had a little layer of dust on the top. And it's got cloth boards. So I think that's quite a nice addition to my first collection, that one. I'd love a, I would really, really love a jacketed copy of that. Um, and if someone's got a jacketed copy, because you never know, um, that they could just, you know, facsimile for me, just do a, a curl copy, just so I could have it on the shelf in a jacket, that would be fantastic. Um, now, I did get one other hardback, and it was in the charity shop. And it's by Anthony Beaver. So Anthony Beaver is uh, writes non-fiction and um, he uh, does war titles, basically. And although this isn't a first edition, it looks to me unread. And uh, I've got quite a collection of Anthony Beaver. I've never shown them on the channel because, well, I've not really had a chance to share my sort of military history stuff. Um, I, do, I do find it interesting. But it's just got a couple of, um, it's got a couple of cancer research stickers on there, which I'm going to... What I'm going to try and do is, it should be okay, but I'm going to try and pick this purple one up and then that will lift up the blue one. That is the plan. So I usually have a, a fairly generous thumb finger now. Just to tease it. And the, the trick is with stickers is patience is the key. So just take your time. Don't rush it last thing you want to do is rip it and put any undue pressure on it it's, uh, this is coming off quite nicely and now because I've gone underneath it's now taking off the uh, the actual price sticker which was just two pound for this which I was more than happy to pay any spare books that I don't list online, I always give them to charity shops. And there's uh, a mixture of ones sort of quite near me. There's one street which has got about four or five charity shops in the same street. And I take it in turns with whoever gets it. But look, that has come up lovely, hasn't it? Really, really nice, that. So once again, I think it's probably just been on a shelf for a little bit of time, but hard i mean it's like mint isn't it for two pounds that's a great book there we are lovely excellent God. right finally finally we're at the last the last item and it's not actually a book it's this electronic blip game so as you know i'm a lover of all things palatoy um they were the company that released Action Man in the UK and they also released the Star Wars figures in the UK. Uh, this was an electronic game, this is before the days even of Space Invaders, um, which I remember when I was at school some kids had this game but I I never owned one. Um, I had something similar called um, Simon was the one I had. Um, so I'm hoping it works. It's got a timer and it's got some batteries in there. Um, so what I was going to do, that's the little box inners. I was going to uh, repair the box first of all, because as you can see, it needs some glue along this, this edge here. It needs to have some glue along there. And that's it. That's the only bit that needs gluing because the rest of it is um, in flaps, you see. So there is the, uh, that would be the printed box. So it is just that one edge that's going to need it, which is absolutely fine. So I just need to get some glue in there, right along there, and along that top edge there where the glue's been there, but because this is a 50 year old toy now, almost anyway, um, it's just sort of come away. It's just you know, perished as it were. So 
gluing this bit here should be fairly straightforward. I'm going to do some. My Pritt stick is very um. It's dried out. I've been here so long, my Pritt stick has dried out. So maybe if I tactically smear some, I think that might actually be a better better ploy actually, because I can just smear it along the area which it needs to go on with you know some accuracy, shall we say. Yeah, this will be all right, won't it? Now I paid thirty pound for this, which I think is is you know about right um, for the for the toy that's in such nice condition as well. Um, I took the dealer's word because he did say it did work, and there are some batteries in it, but I've not tried it yet. Um, but basically, it was like an electronic tennis game, and as long as it powers up, I'll be happy. Yeah, Power Toy were a great, great toy company. They're sadly no longer with us. But when I did my West Point video and I showed this, he said, oh, why didn't you do, why didn't you show blip working? And I said, oh, I haven't cleaned it yet. So hopefully I'll, I'll try and remember to go back to the West Point video and say that if you want to jump to this point in this video, <clears throat> you'll uh, you'll be able to see blip in action with a bit of luck as long as we can get it going so let's get those bits there glued together obviously once we've got the the frame back in we'll be able to give it a bit more rigidity but for now i think that'll be okay just let that sort of set a moment now the game itself, apart from a little bit of dust, it should be pretty nice this. Um, okay. This is another great use for the toothbrush. As you can see it's a pretty nice nice shape, isn't it? run my duster over it here to clear the screen now on oh yeah there's a little light there So the way it works in one player is you have a timer and um, it's basically tennis and you have to press the button where you think the ball is going to go. So if we give this one another try, hit the serve button. <laughs> it's harder than it looks. I'm trying to get a rally going. Oh, got it. Got it. Oh dear, it's hard. Let's put it that way. It's quite hard, but it works. That's cool. And you can play a two-player, of course, with this. It was the only game I knew as a kid that you actually had a two-player version. So let's set that to zero. Now, one thing I don't want to do leave the batteries inside because that can be fatal can't it that can cause the, the compartment to leak but that's really nice so what we're going to do now is just pop it back into the box hopefully without the box breaking and then the polystyrene will keep the box rigid as the, uh, the glue's had a a couple of minutes now to sort of go a bit harder so hopefully it's not going to fall the bits on us this was the edge that we glued down like so 
so and i was going to give the front the box a bit of a pot gentle polish as well with the box in it with the game in it rather so A lot of these games from the period, they're quite fragile and delicate. But I think that's come up all right, that. Yeah, a little bit of something on the front there. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe a bit of white, looks like a bit of white spirit or something. But there we are. Lovely. Excellent stuff. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed looking through my pickups for the month of February 2022. There was certainly a real mixture of stuff there. Some old, some new, an amazing uh, viewer donation to the channel, which was fantastic. So thank you once again, uh, Chris and Juliet. We even had a bit of 70s retro gaming action to boot. Thank you very, very much for watching today. Thank you for your continued support with the channel and I'll look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.